Good afternoon and welcome to the 43rd Olivia Awards in this quite damp, quite rainy, but still very glamorous London. Outside the most beautiful, be beautiful building, the Royal Albert Hall. It is absolutely stunning. Now for the next 90 minutes, Gok, Anita Rani, Frank Delella and myself will be speaking to the great and good from the theatre world live as they walk up the red carpet to the now. biggest event, down. that's right, in the theatre calendar here in the UK. Anita, I have to say it's so great to be back with you once again for Theaterland's Biggest Night. I know, and it's a first here at the Olivier Awards because royalty will be in attendance. Her Royal Highness, the Duchess of Cornwall, will be walking up the red carpet, so you've got to curtsy. And I'm, going to to bow. I'm going to teach you all the royal protocol. I'm an American, you have to teach to I me. I will do that. And I have to point out, Anita, we have so many special performances happening tonight at the Olivier Awards, including some anniversaries. Disney's The Lion King is celebrating 20 years this year. They're a part of this show. And Mamma Mia, which has been around for, can you believe it, 20 years. That makes me feel old. Celebrating 20 years just last night. Um, they're, they're here, and they're here actually to kick off our show. We have the three dynamos. Ladies, welcome. Ladies, come on up. The dancing queens themselves. <gasps> Hi. Hello. So we have Kate, Sarah, and Ricky. Like, I'm just looking at you. Everybody feels underdressed already. I know. Just under this How do we compete yes. with that? How was last night? Epic. It was the most exciting night. Benny and Bjorn turned up. All the creators of Mamma Mia were there. It was the most exciting. It was evening. superb. So last night was the actual anniversary of 20 years of Mamma Mia in the West End. I mean, what's it like to be part of this phenomenon? It's extraordinary. I mean... I can only say how inspiring it is because it's just loud, party, fun, joyous fun every night. And that's all I can say. I don't know what else to say. <laughs> that's fair. That's fair. What do you think it is about the show that makes it so enduring? It's been watched, you know, by 65 million people around the world. I think translated into 16 different languages. What is it about the show? I think it's a real family show. I think the music is the best pop music that there exists in the planet. Um, and I think it has a lot of heart. I think it's a beautiful story about lovely people actually and people really can they come again and again and again and bring their kids and just all have a massive party together it's so joyous that's what I think people yeah. like I remember when I first saw Mamma Mia I came to London it was the first time I was in London and there, there, there was a show on the boards and I got a ticket and I had the best time when did you first when were you first introduced to Mamma Mia well, when it first started in 1999, I had a friend in the original cast who was telling me all about it in the street while it was rehearsing. And she was saying, and we do this, and then we suddenly burst into song. And I was going, oh my God, this is extraordinary. <laughs> and then, of course, here I am. And in like all, all of us. In full look, barb. <laughs> looking the part, ladies. Oh, thank you. And you're uh, presenting an award at the Olivier's tonight. We are. We're uh, presenting sound design and uh, best costume. Fantastic. What was the party like last night? I mean, 20 years. It was really exciting. It was a huge crowd. And it just felt like there was a lot of love in the room last night for that show and for the amazing production that Judy has created. I mean, it was, the show was half an hour longer last night because as soon as we got on stage, it was completely raucous and riotous. But what a way to celebrate. Like, it's exactly 20 years ago, last night. And some alums were in the audience last night, if I'm not the mistaken. The they show. were in the show. Yeah. Tell yeah. us about it. It was yes. amazing. We had all of the ex-Dynamos coming back and we'd rehearsed in the into the finale so everybody was coming down in Dancing Queen. I mean, the, the crowd went ballistic yeah. and so did we. Because we were so, so proud. Wow. And to Benny and Bjorn. Yes. yes. Benny and Bjorn were And there. Judy Kramer, of course, the yeah. producer. It was... And the did writer. she dance? Did um, Judy dance? She did. I yeah, think she did, I'd of course. I'd have with Benny, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> well, of course, you must. Um, you, I also, you look very radiant considering you had such a big night last night. Oh, yes, I'm uh, hiding a multitude of sins. <laughs> <laughs> Good makeup department. Yes. <laughs> Ladies, congratulations. Thank Have so much, much fun yes. tonight and keep dancing on. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Good Thank night. You. We're going to send it to Gok. Right, so you can imagine we're in central London right now. It's yeah. literally packed yeah. around here. There are thousands and thousands of people, plus hundreds of people working inside. This is the biggest night for theatre in this country, and there has to be one person in control. And we've got him with us right now. It's Julian Bird. Now, you're the CEO of the Society of London of Theatre Society London. Is that right? Uh, nearly right. <laughs> nearly right. <laughs> You've been trying, you were making sure that you got that right. Julian's one of my closest friends, and I, I still don't know he what still your job no is. Idea. Have you, will you forget? Give him after this. I'll think about it. Oh, okay. <laughs> Judy, so, sorry, yeah. go on. Judy, tell us, how long have you been the CEO of this incredible, uh, incredible night? So I've been CEO of, of the Society of London Theatre mm. for eight and a half years, and this is my ninth year producing the Olivier Awards, which have sort of grown to this thing that you see here today. So, so. does it get easier and easier as the years go by? 
kind of love to tell you it does, but it really doesn't. And I guess because every year we try and do something different and do a bit more, uh, and that's definitely the case this year. So, so it's a big know, show coming he's up. He's acting really cool right now. But yeah, let me tell you, I've been with Julian all year, and every time we meet <laughs> up, he wants to talk about the awards. It's about what we're doing this year. What can we expect that's different this year to last year? Well, there's more performances this year on stage okay. than we've ever done, so we've kind of stretched everything. Um, that's why we only, that's why everyone was sharing dressing rooms. Indeed. This is not uh, enough people. Exactly. There's not, not enough rooms, people, yeah. not enough rooms. We've converted every bit of the Royal Albert Hall into dressing rooms. It's extraordinary backstage. Um, Jason isn't here with me, Manford, who's hosting yeah. the show. I can probably tell everyone exclusively he's doing a little opening number. So is he? Oh, wow. There's a bit of routining going on around that still at the moment. So. Is he nervous? Is he OK? Oh, uh, you know, everyone has a bit of nerves on a night like this. Me too. Yeah. Um, you know, and of course, this year, it's the first royally attended, the first Royal Olivier's when uh, the Duchess of Cornwall will be joining us uh, tonight. Does so. that make it harder, knowing that she's going to be here? Not harder. I mean, this is all the same, but logistics, you know. Um, yeah. You know, she is a very senior member of the royal family, and uh, there's quite a lot of things that go along with that. So uh, we're looking forward to her joining us in, in a little while, about 90 minutes' time. So. Awesome. What are you thinking about the nominees this year? Are you pleased? you think everyone is deserved to be up there? Very much so. I mean, it's a very open year of nominations, I think. You know, some years we've been standing here on, on these nights, and it's been all about Hamilton, and people coming knew that Hamilton were going to clean up, or Harry Potter were going to kind of clean up. This year it's incredibly open. So in lots of the categories, you really couldn't call it. And, you know, yeah. a very justified, word worthy list of nominees and we'll see later on who and wins. A, a lot of people out there might argue that award ceremonies maybe are not needed any longer because people have made their own mind up about the, the work that they see. But I, I kind of disagree with that. I think they're very glamorous events. I think they're very wonderful events and they celebrate. Would you agree with that? And can you tell us why you think they're so important? Yeah, I would. And, and the, the main reason why it's so important is for two reasons. One, um, it enables us to show the world. You know, we lead theatre around the world. We sell more tickets in London theatre. 15 and a half million people come every single year just to the West End. Yeah. You know, we're the biggest theatre industry in the world. So it displays that to everywhere around the world. And we're, as we speak here now, we're going into every country in the world, you know, pretty yeah. apart oh, from... I couldn't be so, I'm so know. proud and, about being here. I know, it's amazing. It's amazing. <laughs> and, and the other reason is, you know, this is all about inspiring the next generation. Yeah. And we know that award shows, whether it's for film or theatre like this, inspires the next generation both to come and work in the theatre, either on stage or behind the scenes, or just come and see a show. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. We were talking about that, that, you yeah. know, we want the next generation to be there, exactly. be here. I wanted to come Absolutely. here. Yeah. Quick, quick mention of glamour, Chester Barry. I know, Barry. I'll, looking I'll, so good. Oh, wonderful, Savoy Roy Taylor. Who and, styled uh, you? Did I style you? I, I'm, no. I'm afraid not. <laughs> Did no. you Maybe hear next that? year. It's so rude. Well, listen, thank you so <laughs> much, Julian. We love Pleasure. you. Thank Have you a wonderful to both evening. Of you, so. and I think we're going over to Frank now. So up to you, gorgeous. Thank you, Gok. Uh, we are with, Frank, we are with the British I was say that dance... He threw to me, but it, it's... Oh, we're both here. We're Frank. both here. <laughs> yes! <laughs> British dance royalty, brother and sister, Kevin and Joanne Clifton. Welcome to the Olivier's, your first Olivier's. First Olivier's, and we're presenting an award. I'm so nervous. Yeah, yeah you, you look amazing, You look both beautiful. Of you. I mean, you it's, it's so for handsome. best theatre choreographer, yeah. Kevin Clifton. You are here to present that award. I know, it's so exciting. It's my first time at the Olivier's. Um, um, it's the first time that we'll get to do this together, and obviously, best theatre choreographer is is a big one for us, as you know, as dancers all of our lives. And brilliant choreographers as well. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. I mean, it, yeah, it's it's just the whole thing so exciting for us. We're a bit giddy at the moment. Just seeing you, we're made <laughs> just us a bit giddy. You. I'm a yeah, I'm just going to get. It's a red strictly red reunion. I'm, 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 the th I'm the fourth wheel. I'm at a no, place. No, no, no. We'll get you involved. Don't up. worry. Sign me up. Now, you guys are both currently starring in musical theatre works. Yes. Rock of Ages and Rocky Horror. What can you tell our folks? at home about these two shows? Well, I'm definitely wearing now more than I wear in the show. I'm in my knickers and bra. Oh, I mean, it's just a bonkers show. You'll have to just come along and see it to understand it. And you're playing Janet in Rocky Horror. Yes, I'm Janet, yes. And you're in Rock of Ages, one yeah. of my favourites. So I'm playing uh, Stacey Jacks, who's a big rock star. So again, nothing like this. I've got bandana, <laughs> the complete hair, awesome. guy liner, all of that. Very Axl, Ro Axl Rose vibes. So yeah, completely different. I'm going to be on my best behaviour tonight, and Stacey Jacks is never on his best behaviour. <laughs> you have to be good at Royal Albert. <laughs> I mean, everybody in the UK knows you from Strictly, obviously, and you've been dancing your whole lives as brother yeah. and sister. But what? Tell me about your first theatre experience. What do you remember? What was the first thing you went to see? Uh, yeah. Was it Joseph think, or was it Cats? I think Joseph. That's what I was going to say. I think Cats was the first thing I remember b being really little, and yeah. uh, and I remember going home and having all the words and having the little oh, tape. And, cassette tape. Didn't yeah, we? and we'd and sing Dad it would all play the time. It in the car. Yeah. Yeah. And see, then we used we to know act all the out, colours, didn't we? Then we used to act out Chitty Chitty Bang Bang yes. all the time in the front room. The yes. fire 
guards guard. used to be the front of the car. That was the car. Yeah. Every and the, and the snooker queue of my dad's was like the old bamboo, the, the old, old bamboo. bamboo. Yeah, yeah. I'm seeing a whole new show here. I know. Yeah, exactly. I was going to say, that's not fair. They have like brother and sister team at home. I know. <laughs> really well, listen, guys, have an amazing night. You look sensational. I can't wait to see you on that stage presenting the award. Well, thank, thank you, you both. Much. Thank you. Thank you. Congrats Thanks. to both of you. Have thank fun. You. So you can imagine it is raining, but all the glamour states are out right now and they're out because I've got a very special guest here, Athena Stevens, who is nominated for, I'm going to read this out, Outstanding Achievement, check you out, in Affiliate Theatre for Schism at the Park Theatre. Welcome. Hi, Carl. How are you? I'm very well. How are you? You look absolutely gorgeous, first Thank of all. You. The blue against the red is absolutely amazing. Thank Do you feel you. beautiful? I feel gorgeous. Really? Well, listen, tell us a little bit about Schism. So Schism is basically the story about a woman outgrowing a man. Right. And when do we let go of painful relationships? Right, ever, never. You never let go. You hold or on when, to them. Yeah, <laughs> or when do you move on and when don't you? Yeah, absolutely. So you wrote it and you performed in it as yes. well. Yes. Was it very hard to write for yourself then, knowing what you're going to put onto the stage? Yeah, so I started this play about 13 years ago. Right. And I really grew up with it. I was 18 at the time and I noticed that something was happening in my relationship right. that I needed to address. You need to talk. So you thought you'd tell the whole world. You'd write well, a play about it. <laughs> so I grew up in the discoveries that I made right. coming as a woman yeah. really were in that story. Absolutely. So the female-led Story. Absolutely. And how does it feel to be nominated then? Because it, you must feel incredible. It's extraordinary. I am mindful that I'm the first individual with a disability yep. that's been nominated. I'm mindful that a woman has never won in the category that I'm up for. Well, listen, you've got to win then. What can I do to make this happen? I don't know. It's so important. Um, talk to me a little bit about putting disability out there and putting it into into the mainstream, into theatre, because we're kind of living in a world at the moment where we talk about equality all the time, but I just don't think we see very much of it. Exactly, and that is really what I'm called on earth to do, is tell great stories about people that happen to be disabled, yeah. that have really full lives and really complicated yeah. problems. Regardless. Absolutely. And I think, you know, we talk about the cuts to benefits yeah. that are going on for disabled and vulnerable people. Part yeah. of that is we don't see them yeah. in our art. Absolutely. And if we include them yeah. in the yeah. media. Absolutely. Well, listen, I would love to stand here and talk to you all night, but we'll get very wet. And also, you've got to go inside to find Indeed. out whether you've won or not. Have the best wonderful evening. And listen, we'll catch up with more people down here in a little while. Thanks, gorgeous. Bye. Thank you, Gok. I'm here with the stars of Tina the Musical, Adrian Warren, and Kobna Holbrook Smith. Congratulations to you both, both nominees tonight for this fantastic new bio musical. All right, Adrian, what was it like to get the blessing from the queen of pop rock herself? Uh, Tina Turner. What more could you ask for? It's a dream come true. I've been a fan of her music since I was a kid, so this to tell her story has been such a dream. And how about you? Um, it's exactly the same for me. To play somebody as complicated as like is an actor's mm -hmm. dream, but also to tell the story of someone as legendary as Tina Turner yeah. is another sort of dream. <laughs> it's pretty amazing. I mean, people are losing the plot about this show, aren't they? Completely. What is it about this story? I mean, we know it's the music, it's the, but what is it that's really captured the imagination of this show? Well, I think that she inspires so many people because she really is resilience and perseverance personified, right? And people just love her music because they can feel all the strength that she has in her music. And so I think people leave, and it's electric by the time you leave the theater. Yeah. People are standing on their feet, they're dancing, they're remembering the first time they saw her, and they just love it, and we, we're so grateful for that. Well, let's talk about that, because at the end of the show, it's a full-on rock concert, and I mean, 
Adrian, you are Tina Turner on that stage. <laughs> What's it like getting the energy from the audience thrown up onto that stage? I mean, it's absolutely insane. I perform for them, and they get, that energy that they're giving me is getting me through that as well. I mean, what, what do you think? Like, yeah, no, no, for me, it feels amazing. As an actor, you know that you're charging towards something that is going to absolutely detonate. Yeah. <laughs> it's pretty, you know, that anticipation is thrilling. And exactly. uh, Kupna, you've been acting for a long time, but this is your first musical. Right? First ever musical, yeah. I'm, <laughs> I've loved it. It's by far the best job I've ever done. I, I've met so many people. Adrian inspires me every single day, and the project has built me and enhanced me in ways I can't describe. Do you, I mean, Tina has created so many amazing tunes. Do you guys have a favorite tune you look forward to singing each night uh, when you're at the Outbridge Theater? All of them, but I will say Nutbush City Limits has been my favorite since I was a kid. It's so funky and raw, and I love it. I love singing that. Yeah. How about you? I love watching Adrian sing Better Be Good, <laughs> and I love singing Be Tender. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's But we fun. should point out all the tunes are in the show. Yes. There's so, how many tunes do you sing yourself? About 23 a wow. night. 23 or 24. Can I ask, how, where crazy. do you get your energy from? I mean, this is a full on performance. You are embodying Tina. You're singing. Like, where does that come from? Is that a lot of sleep? Is it a secret recipe that you have? Could no. you share it with everybody? <laughs> like, no secret going? recipe. <laughs> I eat everything, everything in sight. No, I, I sleep a lot. And, um, and I just kind of, when you're on the stage, the energy from the audience just kind of comes out. And what does it mean for the two of you to be at the Olivier's tonight? It is so special. First off, to be here representing our show and also to be here together yeah. is really special. Yeah, I've never been before and it's been a dream of mine since being you know, an actor in this country to attend this ceremony and it's, yeah, it's a dream come true. And also from a represent representation point of view, yeah, I mean, yeah, yes, yeah. absolutely, yes, yes. absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Before we let you go, uh, what are you performing tonight at the show? I am performing River Deep Mountain High, yeah, on Royal Albert Hall's stage, which I cannot believe I'm saying out loud. Yes, you must, and be before we really let you go, I'm sorry, Frank, I'm going to have to butt in there, but I, I'm going to be very girly. I need to know about this dress, please. I mean, the dress is spectacular. Thank you, Julia McDonald. I'm so, so grateful. I love this dress. Well, so you cool. look sensational. Oh, no, no, we have, yeah, the please. Shoes are yeah. Yeah. Christian Louboutin. These are red bottoms. Look at that, the fierce, the tigrant. They are, tigrant they're I growling mean. at me. Oh, <laughs> they're growling through me. Yeah. Yes, yes. Well, guys, have an incredible night. You look sensational. <laughs> Lift the roof tonight. Have Lift so the roof. much fun. Congratulations to you both. We're going to send it down to Gok now. I could so see you in those I've shoes. I've got the worst shoe envy. I'm watching that thinking, that's not, I'm so underdressed in my little paint and slippers. That's not fair. Not fair. It's not fair. We've now been joined by some of the cast members of Fun Home Team who have been nominated for Best New Musical. So we have Harry and Brooke, who plays Small Allison, and Zubin, who plays Bruce. Welcome. Hello. Welcome, guys. So Zubin, tell us first off, for anyone that's not seen it, what is it about? Oh, it's about a lot of things, but uh, these two are my daughter, but in the actual musical, they're played three generations. So you've got the 12-year-old Alison, right. then you've got the 18-year-old Alison, then you've got the 44-year-old That's Alison. a lot of Alison going on. A lot of Alison. A lot no, of Alison. I'm their daddy. And it's basically about their life with dad growing up in a uh, funeral home. Right. He was a high school English teacher. Okay. He was also mad about renovating homes, and he was quite an artistic man. And of course, Alison Bechdel, who wrote the original graphic novel that the musical yeah. is based on, which is what these lot play, grew up to be a, a genius and a fantastic cartoonist and a fantastic writer. And she penned this wonderful book called Fun Home, which the right. musical is then based on. Incredible. And girls, you must be very excited about being here tonight. I'm absolutely so delighted to be here. It's, <laughs> it's such so a joy. Gorgeous. It is actually so fun. So tell us, Harriet, about when you found out that you'd been nominated. If I remember correctly, I think I was in the car after school, and then, yeah, I was just, it was like, it was an average day as it would be, you know? Um, and then I think my mum got a phone call and then she said, I think you've been nominated for an Olivier Award. And I was like, what? And it was actually so, so amazing to Can find I ask out. how old you are? I'm 11. You're 11 years old and you've already been nominated <laughs> for an Olivier. Could you stop laughing like that? That's not fair, I'm so jealous. <laughs> That's crazy. Now let's talk to you, Brooke, because you, you both share the role, don't you? So how many nights are you on stage? Um, well, since there was only two of us, um, and there was, we shared the nights between a week, um, normally we did around three or four performances a week each. Yeah. So how do you manage to fit in life, friends, homework, living? Well, for my homework, I just got it done straight away. Um, so Discipline. I could just, yeah. Discipline. Yeah. So I could just relax. Um, and then I guess 
we just got through it by my friends helping me learn the lines. And Can I ask a really, it. really quick question? When you got the role and you went, had to go back to school and tell all your friends that you were going to be performing in the West End and now you're at the Olivier's, what does that feel like? Do you walk around literally like Madonna and Britney <laughs> at school? Do you feel like super, super popular? Um, I'd probably say it was a rev it's been a revelation, this whole you journey. You are so grown up. You're more grown up than me. I can't bear it. <laughs> she was just grown up last year as well. <laughs> um, it's been ever so since when I found out that I had the part and now I'm here standing here talking about the run it's been although the time's been really short it's been such a long journey oh. and it's been really wonderful well listen we, we wish you continued success yes. good luck good tonight, luck tonight. Thank you. absolutely Thank you. and I'm sure we're going to be interviewing you probably next year the year after I'd say 10-15 years yeah. Hollywood exactly. yeah. <laughs> thanks guys have a great evening Thank you. alright folks I'm here with Team Sweat Martha and Lynette congratulations and happy Olivier Awards how do you guys feel tonight being out here on this uh, rainy day and heading into Royal Albert Hall? the rain, but it's really exciting. I mean, it's my, it's my first time at the Olivier. It's your first time? It's my second time. This is your second it's time? Second okay, time. so wow. you're a seasoned Olivier <laughs> goer. First, not, first time ever been, like, in a show, with a show nominated, that's been nominated. Yeah. Nominated, yeah. nominated the best new play. Yes. How does that make you feel? It's really exciting, and really it's an honor to be a part of it. I mean, you know... Lynn's work is so powerful, and you know, obviously, she's received many accolades for it already, and so that's it's really nice to be able to share in some of them with her this time, you know. And it just feels good to know that you know this side of the pond, this play has the same kind of resonance that it does in the states. Why do you think that is? What do you think, I think it is? It's a universal story in uh, the characters, in what it's talking about. I think we feel it in terms of where we are politically in our country now. Um, and when you have amazing characters, mm -hmm. you know, they sit in the macrocosm and in the microcosm. So yeah. everybody can resonate with it. Mm -hmm. And I, her writing. Is, yeah, and her you know, writing, her writing yeah. is so incredible. I saw the show first in New York on Broadway and, and just fell in love with this piece. You know, uh, when did you first experience Sweat, Martha? Well, to be honest, I didn't get a chance to see it when it was on Broadway or at the Public Theater where it, where it started. Um, and I really regretted it, you know, of course. Um, but then, you know, Lynette and I got together and, and I decided we were going to be doing this, or I was going to be doing it. And it turned out to be a kind of a blessing in disguise because I think if I'd seen it, I would have been far too intimidated <laughs> um, uh, because I'd heard such brilliant things about it. And, you know, a, the, a friend of mine played the role that I play. Um, so, you know, it turned out sort of to be a good thing. So I came to it with completely fresh eyes, which I'm glad about. And how hands-on was Lynn with this uh, UK production? Were changes made? Uh, was she in the room collaborating with you guys? Uh, she, what, she, she came over during previews, mm -hmm. so we got incredible, incredible insight from her then. But in rehearsals, it was just us. And again, as Martha says, it's quite. I think that was a blessing, actually, that we came to it completely clean. No one in the cast had seen that version. Mm -hmm. I hadn't seen it. And so we made our version of it, and then Lynn came and spring called Magic, which she came to previews and sort of was the final cherry on top of the cake. That's right. And I just passed your theatre. You guys are going into the Gilgood Theatre. The yes, company yes. sign is down. The sweat sign is up. Oh, I know. Wow. And see, that all happens so fast. And They move quickly over here, don't they? They really do. <laughs> but I mean, I've, I've been inside that theatre and it's just so special. It's really gorgeous in there. And I just, we feel really, really oh, fortunate that we get to do the show there. Martha, what does it mean for as an American to be on the stage here in the West End? It's huge. It means a, a, a a great deal. I mean, it's already huge enough to have been, you know, working at the Donmar, which is a theater I've loved and admired and wanted to work in for many years. And so, you know, this is sort of, I mean, a little bit, I'm a little blown away. It's a little much, <laughs> but, but I'm thrilled. I mean, I couldn't be more excited. And when I saw all that stuff, all those posters out the front, Dear Lord, it was really overwhelming. I mean, we tears. We were we too, were, crying yeah, tears we while we were WhatsApping, and yeah. she sent us the pictures. <laughs> and I just like you know projectile tears coming out of my eyes because it's just so exciting, and I just I have goosebumps thinking about it even and, now. And do you know when you're in a play, and do you get a feel for yeah, this is something special? Yes, There's, absolutely. I think with this and with this company, mm -hmm. I think the group of people in that space together, and the room, and and us as the individuals that made that play, I think no matter how it had been received, we made something special because of how we work together, that's I right. think. So th there's that as well. And because be of her. And, oh. and I guess that's what the audience experience, right? If you guys as a company have just gelled and the, that's the, right. it's all on the page, exactly. the words are there, it then works. we, that's it, we get and it. the foundation is there and it's, it's, you know, it's laid by Lynette and of course by Lynn Nottage. 
And it's just thrilling that we get a chance to actually share and even further explore in that new space, in a proscenium, in a much bigger house and share it with so many more people. It's really, it's thrilling. It's Before a real privilege. Before we let you disappear and have a fantastic evening, let's just talk about these beautiful outfits. You look Thank sensational. You. Thank you. Can we just point out these boots, the please? Oh my. Look at the boots. I've got They're boots pretty great. And these are Louboutin and the, and the uh, tux is by Joshua Kane. Fantastic. Beautiful. We'll have so much fun tonight. Thank you. We'll see you inside. Thank you. Yes, you see you inside. Thank Let's you. send it back down to the carpet. So every single year in theatre land, there's a show that happens where every single leading lady and leading man, in fact, anyone that loves theatre, they're talking about it. And we're now joined by some of the cast here from Come From Away, which is nominated for nine awards, you massive oh show Oh, my goodness. That's yes. Congratulations, first of all. You must be overjoyed but <laughs> petrified at the same time. All, of the, all the feelings. All the feelings, <laughs> all honestly. Yeah, all at once. Over the moon. Yeah. Honestly, we can't, we, we're very honoured not only to be invited to the party and be here and yeah. among the creme de la creme on this glorious night of celebrating theatre, but, like, nine awards? Yeah. Well, nine when you awards. get nominated for nine awards, Robert, do you think, yeah, that's cool, we want all nine? Yes, you do. <laughs> <laughs> Did you bring a massive bag to put all the awards into? Have you got like an IKEA bag with you? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but you're you're both nominated in the same category, yeah, aren't you? Yeah, it doesn't bother. I, I love him dearly. <laughs> it's the elephant in the room. Yeah. No, we it's love fine. each no. other. <laughs> but I tell you what. No, we shouldn't tell the secret, should I? No, 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 no. Tell us a secret. No, Come on, we like secrets. What, we, what right. we did is because we're both nominated the same award. When we do the speech, if one of us gets it, we do the same speech. <laughs> oh, I love it's that. So one it's person, easy. That, is, that isn't a secret, that's we'll lazy. That's easy. You can both complete lazy. Yeah. Um, talk, talk to us about backstage, because obviously, as we all know, theatres form families. So you must have been very, very tight and very close already, but then you get nominated for nine awards. What does that do to the company backstage? It just, I mean, we're all really, really chuffed, to be honest with you. The nine sure. nominations, it's fantastic. And the atmosphere, back, the atmosphere backstage in our show is wonderful anyway. I mean, we're yeah. a very close company. I know people say that, but I mean, we really can I just say we're hardly ever backstage. We're yeah. all it's on stage for a hundred right. minutes. Yeah. Isn't it a hundred, a hundred and three, a hundred three, 103 103 minutes? Three. With no <laughs> interval. <laughs> With no interval. With no interval. And it's literally once we start, we're on stage the whole time. You don't lead the stage. You're yeah. on stage the whole time. And so is the audience. They, we take them on that journey. That was right. there was an interval. They they cut it Did because they, they wanted the audience to feel like you're on that journey with us. I've never heard of that ever. That's incredible. And it works yeah. really well. It's whipped into a frenzy, and they, yeah. they don't. They're not allowed to clap. And then it all of a sudden is the end, and then they have yeah. to sort of explode. But that's quite a long time for you guys to be in character and really focus on, well, you know, on, on the show. Different characters, not just one character. We play lots of different characters, and we have to switch on the, literally on a button. Yeah. So it is tough. It's, I mean, you're exhausted by the end of the show. How, how, what do you do then? Have you got any little routines that, that see you through? Like I do panto every single year, and it's exhausting. It's shattering. And I know that I need to cut back on the booze a little bit and relax a little bit in between shows. Yeah, have you got any sense. little things that you do to see you through Don't a working week? Don't drink before the show. That's for sure. Yeah. No, well, that, that's good. Oh, That's really good know. advice. Oh, wow. <laughs> um, the boring one, lots of water. But yeah. actually, I have a little sweet in my oh. jean pocket that I have a little suck on before I sing my big solo. Do, are you There's allowed to do suck, that? A little no. suck on your sweet? No. Well, you, I mean, as long as the audience don't see. But I now everybody's gone. Okay, but what, what sort of sweet? Does it have to be a specific it's sweet? A black Jakeman's. Oh, is it? Oh, hey, listen. I, I've got a voice that can clean ovens. Not a sweet. A sweet is not going to help my voice. Listen, I think we've got some footage now behind the scenes of the space you were talking about. Listen, congratulations. Yeah. The best of luck tonight. Uh, and if you haven't got massive hangovers tomorrow, there's a problem. Exactly. But we're going to see now a little film from Come From Away. Welcome to the Phoenix Theatre and Come From Away. My name's Alan Berry and I'm the musical director for the show here in London. We've been nominated for nine Olivier Awards, one being the Outstanding Music Achievement Award, uh, which we're very excited about. The show is about the events on and after 9-11 uh, and the show is based in Newfoundland, uh, a small town with a large airport in Gander where 38 planes and thousands of passengers were diverted to when American airspace was closed on that horrendous day. And the show basically just shows the goodness of humanity on such an evil, evil day. The people of Gander and the surrounding communities that invited them all into their hearts and homes and looked after them. So the music, the people of Newfoundland are 
uh, storytellers, they are music makers, it's in their DNA. So it's really important to integrate that music, that musical style into the show. So in order to achieve that uh, music every night, we have a band of eight people on stage, including myself. So this is, this is my office um, of an evening of which we have keyboards, um, we have this harmonium as well, which is actually quite fun. Um, sort of pump with one hand. And we have the button accordion. This particular instrument, uh, Ray, our, our amazing baron player, is, is the heartbeat of the show. The whole show is based around this. It never stops this incredible Celtic hand drum. Um, he's also got a djembe as well, um, and also uh, quite a fascinating sort of udu instrument as well. And we come into the realms of all the stringed instruments. So we start with our fiddle player, Aoife. Um, who's fabulous. She brings just such that sort of amazing Celtic traditional, you know, this soaring high lines and this wonderful sort of jigs and reels that we hear in the show. We have two guitar chairs, um, all of which play a total of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven guitars. Uh, and this little fella here is called uh, the Ugly Stick. It's, it is a local instrument to Newfoundland. And as you can see, it's sort of built from a broom uh, with a Wellington boot on the end, and then just various sort of bottle tops uh, and other sort of noisemakers which are which are nailed to it, uh, and it's played with a drumstick. So I hope you've enjoyed uh, a little walk around our little show that we have here at the Phoenix Theatre. Uh, when you come see the show, uh, one little tip, uh, make sure you stay after the bows, you won't be disappointed. I'm not happy. Why? I'm just not happy. Because I'm a fashion stylist, I've worked in the business for 25 years. I mean, I know glamour. Yes. I know women, I know gorgeous clothes, and I feel so underdressed <laughs> right now because of five gorgeous women standing to your Well, left. how do you think I'm feeling, <laughs> mate? Welcome, girls. You oh my gosh. look beautiful. Sensational. Beautiful. Oh my goodness. Please, can I be your friend? Please. <laughs> Please, can I be your stylist? More like. Um, girls, we're going to start on the fashion, then we're going to talk about your nomination, you clever lot. Um, first of all, tell us who are you wearing? We'll start down here. Uh, this is from the new collection by Amanda Wakeley. Gorgeous, and Amanda. The jewellery is Stephen Einhorn. Oh, lovely. And you, madam? Boodles. Oh, gorgeous boodles, get and in there. And then Caroline Castigliano, beautiful oh, dress, yes. Beautiful, yes. and it fits you like a glove, you look stunning. Thank you. And then we have Susan. This is Max Mara. Oh, stunning. Oh. Uh, and uh, the jewellery is me. Oh, well done, <laughs> congratulations, your jewellery. And let's go to Anna. This is made by a friend of mine who's a designer called Krista Davis, and we designed it together. Oh, good. Oh, well done. So it's I'm so jealous. It's <laughs> and Tamara? Uh, this is from a vintage shop uh, in America, and the earrings are borrowed off my mate Laura, what wrote a play. Oh, lovely. We love that. So, guys, you're all up for let's just read this one out. Okay, then. So, you are here, and you are here. I'm so sorry. Uh, home line, darling. No, have you got the. There you go. Laura, I'm so sorry. Oh, I'm, no, sorry. I'm dyslexic, so there you go. So I'm now struggling. So, so Laura, Laura tell, us you about, wrote tell us about the play. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, it's called Home, I'm Darling. Yeah. It's about a woman who wants to be a perfect 1950s housewife. Shall I, shall shall I, I just again? do this, like this? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll get out of the shop. <laughs> shall I start again? <laughs> we went to the same school. No, did we? Because <laughs> I, did, did you go to Tiffin's? Should we just have a chat no, here, maybe? No, we'll but I, no, but I live near Tiffin's. <laughs> No, 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 no! <laughs> but I've, I've actually done a talk at Tiffin's before. Oh. Okay, sorry, sorry, Laura. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Laura, tell us, a bit, Tori, tell us play, about the play. Instead of being upstaged by my leading actress, um, is called Home, I'm Darling, and it stars Catherine Parkinson as a woman called Judy who wants to be a perfect 1950s housewife. Brilliant. We Sounds love that. And obviously, Catherine, you are the lead. I am that woman. Yes. <laughs> was it was it a big deal to get the part? Do you have to go through loads of rounds and auditions with Laura? I had to pay her, um, <laughs> and I'm still paying off what I owe her. But I'm very pleased because it's been the most wonderful work experience of my life. Um, can we talk a little bit about the Olivia? Sorry, go on, yeah, you go, you go, go. Do you know what? We suddenly realised that actually we're trying to get far too many people on this stage. Yeah, we're so too we apologise. <laughs> <laughs> we apologise. <laughs> but let's talk about the Olivia. We've got so many nominations. So many nominations. <laughs> <laughs> um, one of the most glamorous nights for theatre in the calendar. Do you think they're important? Do you think it's important to have these kind of nights? Of course it is. No, it's just glorious to have these kind of nights. It's glorious to have these kind of nights because, you know, we've 
work our socks off all the time and yeah. this is just fun and lovely to be together and dress up a bit and you know it's lovely of course it is and it's nice to celebrate other people in the business as well would you agree with that because yes, I've done this quite course. a few years now I'm a huge yes. fan of musical theatre and the fact that we get to see loads of numbers because we haven't yes. been able to see any of these yes. shows no, it's ages true. for ages it's true and it's lovely it's are like they going to sit down and watch all these fabulous yeah. shows absolutely well listen we love you so much I'm so sorry we are literally like a bag of spring rolls <laughs> on this on this stage I, I do apologise so but you know next year when we're here again we're going to get you up one by one all right? <laughs> have the most wonderfully and I have to say can I just say she's the most gorgeous woman I've ever met in my entire life I cannot stop kissing you <laughs> you're lovely thank you so much have a gorgeous evening <laughs> see you later no I think there needs to be a restraining order on the other stage. I know. What is going on? What is going on down I know it's the Olivier's. Just kisses galore, Jason. What? We are joined by the host of the show, <laughs> 2019, Jason Mumford. You're back again. I am back again, yeah. I know. How exciting. I must have done something right. I'm uh, obviously the best comedian in his price range. <laughs> so, yeah, back again. Uh, but no, really honoured to be back. It's uh, such a spectacular night and it's lovely to be here. It really is. Jason, we're getting a musical number out of you this evening, right? Uh, uh, yeah, I mean, we're doing a little bit at the top of the show. I was at rehearsal. Oh, you were? Of course you were. Yeah, I won't spoil it, but um, yeah, there's a little a little bit at the top, nothing much. 30 seconds and then on with the show. So tell us what we've got to look forward to. Well, the night is just a spectacular night. We, you know, we're going to open with The Lion King. Uh, we've got some musical numbers from The King and I, uh, Come From Away, uh, Swan Lake are going to be performing. Uh, it's just a... You know, I don't know how much these tickets cost, but whatever they are, it's not worth it because <laughs> they are. These should be like 500, 600 quid. Yes. They're amazing. The show. So, and then obviously all the people in the room. We've got Ian McKellen, Gloria Estefan, uh, Bill Pullman, Sally Field, Shane Ritchie. Like all the names. All the greats. All the greats. Crazy. What have you loved this season? What a season for the Olivier's. What have you loved this season? I have. I, mean, I come from away. I thought was unbelievable. Um, six, I think, is fabulous as well. It's just come out of nowhere. Um, and uh, and company, you know, which I'd seen originally. And when they said it was going to be a gender swap, you know, you think, well, how, how will this work? Well, and it it's seamless. You wouldn't. In fact, if anything, it's better. It's, better. it's a new show. It's, it's just a brand new show. It comes with a load of different things to think about, and it's uh, it's wonderful. Don't you think we're living in a bit of a magic time for musicals at the moment? Yeah, I think there is. I think there's definitely um, a resurgence of them. They're, they're exciting. And also what's nice is to see that the, the Olivier's, are, uh, uh, they accept the popular popular vote as well. They're not. It's not a snobbish affair, you know. On, on other years, a show like Tina Turner Musical, they could have easily gone, oh, well, it's, a, it's just a jukebox show, so it doesn't get to be in with the arty crowd. But actually, they've gone, you know what, this show is sold out every night. There's a reason for that. Let's honour it. Absolutely. Well, speaking of musical theatre, you're about to hit the road doing Curtains, the Candor Ned musical. Yes, I what am. What can you tell us about that? Yeah, I'm excited about it. I mean, it's a it's a whodunit, and the British public, we love a whodunit. Uh, we uh, we start uh, rehearsals in August, and we, we're, we're touring around the, the country, hopefully coming into town uh, early next year. And um, it's just a great show. It was um, David Hyde Pierce did it on Broadway, so it's never been here before. And it's exciting. I'm looking forward to it. And Congratulations. Thank Jason, you. Jason, you're about to be on stage hosting in front of the great and good of Theatreland. Everybody is in there, like you said. Shane Ritchie, Sally Fields, the lots. How do you feel? You prepped, ready, good to go? I'm very prepped. I think that, you know, I'm ready. I've, I've got, you know, but what's difficult is this show is a, it's a big show and, and it's a lot of people that you're talking to. We're, obviously we're, we're live on Facebook. We go out on Magic FM. We're on ITV later on the evening. You've got the stars, the great and the good. You've got your ensemble and your band and your understudies and the crew. You've got people who've bought tickets. We go out in China in a week's time. And then I've got to find the joke that makes all of those people laugh. <laughs> and how do you do that? I I just go, our next guest. <laughs> well, have so much fun tonight, Jason. Congratulations. You look phenomenal, I swear. Have a good one. See you. Bye bye. Now, it's a good job you lot are either at home, on the bus, you're somewhere watching this and you're not on the red carpet <laughs> because the red carpet is on fire right now because we've got the gorgeous, look at that pose. Hi. Leighton Williams. <laughs> hey, Leighton. Hi. How you look 
phenomenal. You look like Stop you've worn me. the carpet. Honestly, I just thought it's the Olivier's. You've got to come through with a you've strong got look, right? Where's the jacket from? Because it's amazing. Malin Breton. This is the full look. I'm giving you a Louboutin moment. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> and just, you know, serving. I'm just so excited to be here. Oh, so, fantastic. Leighton, you're currently starring in the absolutely amazing musical. Everyone's talking about Jamie. Yeah. How long have you been in there? I've been, it's about a couple of months now. So I'm in my, my eighth, ninth week. Last week until a holiday. Much needed. And have you found your stilettos? Are you, are you working it now? <sighs> Honestly, I'm, and it sounds corny, but I'm truly living the dream. Like when yeah. I walk to work, I see my face up there on Shaspi Avenue. I'm just like, what's going on? Yeah. And honestly, the show just, it's, it fills people's hearts with joy. And just to be able to tell that story every night, it's just I've iconic. seen it five times. Five? I have seen it. I'm like one of those avid fans. I feel really important, really good friends with Dan, who mm -hmm. wrote it. You know, it's such an important play, an important mm -hmm. play. Do you, do you feel like you're under pressure every single night to go on and inspire? And I'm going to tell you why very quickly. Mm -hmm. Because a friend of mine went to see it recently mm -hmm. and said there's sat there and a little boy uh, was probably around 11 or 12, sat in the audience. He went, I feel all right. Oh, my God. So can you That's imagine I mean. that? It's my heart. It just makes my heart do that. Like, I saw a little boy in the front row a couple of weeks ago, and he was watching my every step I just thought this might be the first time he's felt represented on stage and especially with the craziness that's going on in the world you know yeah. all of that it's been in my heart this week like we can be out here doing this looking fabulous and that's not the same everywhere so we really it's really important the message is important. the flag 100 yeah. percent so that you're, you know what the show you're in is important and the Olivier Awards are important to you as well aren't they absolutely this is the Oscars of theatre honey <laughs> I present an award <laughs> what award are you presenting tonight best actress in a musical um so yeah it's at the end of the night so but, uh, you know, just keep myself together. And I am hoping so. the actress that wins that award is dressed up because you're going to wrap stage. Because look Girl, at that jacket. I'm sure you must come through, <laughs> surely. But starring in the West End, do you get a chance to see other shows? This is what I mean. It's actually really embarrassing because, no, like, you, you, eight shows a week, mm. I don't have time. Yeah. Sundays, I'm on voice rest. Oh, yeah. I'm here. Yeah. <laughs> do you know what I mean? And I just, yeah, there's not enough time to see stuff. That's the one downfall, but... Well, at least you get to see some performances today. Exactly. Do you know what? The Olivier's is all about inspiration. For not only for people within the business, but also the kids that are coming through, that are just thinking about going to drama school or performing mm. arts school. What If you could give yourself one very clear piece of advice to you when you were maybe 14, 15 years old, working out what you wanted to do, what would that be? It's really hard for me because I was doing it at that age. Do you know what I mean? But mm. I, And I fell into it so hard. But if... I didn't know I wanted to do it until I was on stage, quite literally. But if, if you're a kid, and I do lots of teaching as well, and students, I just say, just keep going. Like, it's, you, it's, you can have your time, do you know what I mean? Yeah. We've all got something individual to offer the world and something special, so keep slaying. Thank you kids. so much. Leighton, you are incredible. We love you and yeah. have the best, best evening. Love you, guys. Love love you gorgeous. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. We're joined by Keir Charles, who's been nominated for Best Actor in a Supporting Role for the Quiz. Congratulations. Thank you very much indeed. I'm delighted. First time at the Olivier's. First time ever. It's what, what an event, eh? What a spectacle. It's uh, a joy to be able to get dressed up once in a while. And you, you look know, very you? smart too. Thank now tell much. us about the quiz, because this is based on Who Wants to Be a Millionaire, the TV show, right? Yes, it was based on a particular scandal uh, uh, that happened in Who Wants to Be a Millionaire in 2001, I think it was with Charles and Diana Ingram, who were accused and convicted, actually, of, of cheating, of, of, of uh, fraudulently taking the £1 million. We remember. Yes. Coughing, right? Exactly. Well, yes. Tequin Whittock was the, was the gentleman who was accused of coughing, actually, in the audience. And uh, Major Charles Ingram was accused of being in cahoots with him. And you're playing Chris Tarrant. Among other people, I play Chris Tarrant. I play a series of, or I played a series of... Uh, um, TV quiz show hosts, and yes, Chris Tarrant was uh, was certainly one of them. I suppose the, the main one. So, when you got the scripts for this, what did when you thought, hang on, somebody's made a, a show around a TV show around a TV show scandal? Yeah. I mean, I, how does that work? I know it's that exactly what I thought. I thought this is nuts, and then I read it in one sitting, which does not happen for me. Uh, I have a very short attention span, and I sat down, and read the whole thing back to back and was absolutely enthralled and intrigued. I had no idea that there was a, a possibility that they, uh, they, they were wrongly convicted and didn't cheat, which the play uh, kind of supposes, perhaps, or offers up that uh, assessment of it as well. So, um, so yeah, it was, it, was, it, was, it was fascinating. It taught me a lot of stuff I didn't know and I had no idea about. And it was a real page turner. Friends of mine who saw the show in London absolutely adored it. And um, so I ask you, you know, I'm over here representing Broadway and New York. 
I feel like we need this over on the other side of the pond. I mean, what's happening with this place? Let's, some, let's get some producers. <laughs> okay, you, we'll, we'll work the party. We'll work the party, exactly. There's a lot of money here tonight. I, think it I can would smell work. it. Because who wants to be a millionaire? It's a global brand. Well, amazing. yeah, exactly. They had it in America, of course. Exactly. Yeah. It's only to. Uh, hundreds of countries, you know, it really did. Uh, it, it played out everywhere. Um, whether they would know uh, uh, Des O'Connor, uh, it was one of their characters <laughs> I played, and Jim Bowen. We can teach Listen, them. We can to, teach them. They need to know. We can teach them. How, how do you feel about your competition tonight? Tough competition. Very, very, uh, yeah, high standards there. I don't fancy my chances. They're saying the same about you. Don't worry, Kit. Listen, <laughs> have That's an so amazing night. Good luck. I will. I will. Thank you very much. Congratulations. Thank you. Good seeing you. Bye-bye. I am having the biggest pinch moment of my life. And it doesn't happen very often, normally when the all-you-can-eat buffet is going on. But right now, I am joined on this stage with Angelica with some incredible performers, including somebody who took me to drama school when I was 20 years old. It's Patti Lapone. Hello! Hi, I've always, But I've always wanted to meet you. I've always admired you. And oh, do you know what? I'm you. not very good at this. When I really love someone, I can't talk to them. Oh, I basically just you. want to hold you and kiss you. Do you want to kiss, 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 no, kiss, 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 kiss? Do you mind? Oh my God, literally, I'm, I literally, this is a real dream come true moment. But I'm, I'm, honestly... but I'm here for you, Richard and Jonathan, I'm here for you. Well, let's be fair, the boys are hot as well, so there you go. I'm here for them, and you, and them, and you. And you. And you. Congratulations, nine nominations, no yes. less. How does that feel? Well, I'll tell you, I think that we're only as good as our director, and Marianne assembled an extraordinary company, and she reimagined this old musical. It was exciting to work on. We, as a company, became friends. It's the tightest ensemble I've ever been in. Really? The tightest ensemble I've right. ever been in. And um, every night, it was a, a little bit of a party. Every yes. night, it was a little bit of a party. Do you know what? I've seen the show quite a few times, I have to say. Uh, and you do get that from the audience. You do sit and you feel like you're invited to the birthday party every single time. No. Did, did that come straight away as soon as you started rehearsing? We knew, we knew it was something really special, I think because even ahead of time we were aware of the, peop the calibre of the people involved, but yeah. I had no idea that I was going to genuinely adore everyone six months later, which is it's quite rare, I yeah. have to say, <laughs> but like to be up here and, and be representing a cast that we, we feel so passionately about, it was, it yeah. was an amazing experience, so very proud. And Jonathan, I'm surprised you're here because you don't, haven't got a ticket. I know, I didn't You've have a ticket, a ticket in my in my envelope. <laughs> so I saw you, I saw Patty, and I was like, me? And it's a ninja to cross. Can you, can you imagine? And a cartwheel that? and a dive roll. Can you imagine trying to get in, though, and anyone saying no to Patty? Like, well, is no it, one's going to say no to Patty. You've got Patty on your side. You're gonna, you're gonna <laughs> right. Now, is it true, Patty, that you actually turned the roll down at first yes. and had to change your mind? Are you glad you changed your mind? <laughs> oh, I am so happy. I mean, I, it's not that I turned the roll down. I'd given up musicals because they're exhausting, and I'm old, and I had a hip replacement, and I was tired and I, I but I remembered seeing War Horse and Lincoln Center and Curious Incident here and I put out it put it out in the universe that I wanted to work with Marianne Elliott. Oh, wow. And then when this happened, I once I said no, I thought to myself, if you say no she'll never ask you again. Yeah. So I said yes and I am so glad did that you I know did. that when you said yes you'd be doing ensemble choreography. <laughs> 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 Would that have changed? No, no. <laughs> All right, side by side. All right. <laughs> Patty Lapone removals with the tables and the chairs. Now the show actually came finished last Saturday, yeah. and you're talking about how you guys are so tight. How's it been not yeah, how do being you say with goodbye? each other? We still communicate. We, we have a big WhatsApp group, so we're all like texting the whole time. And there's been a few outings. You went for like dinner the other day, yeah, with a few of them. Yeah. But it's really weird. It's like you go on this holiday and this adventure and you see each other more than your own family for yeah. six, eight months and then suddenly it's like, and that, it's done. Yeah. So Last absolutely. night at the, in the theatre, I think I will never forget. I oh, think it's just, well, you, just when you think you're prepared to sort of say goodbye, it just This is all your rap party. Yeah, right now, right. you finished last week. This it's is your rap party. party. You <laughs> get inside, yeah, yeah, yeah. you drink yeah. as many bottles of champagne, you it's, have the best night. It's a better rap party than the one we were given. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you very much. Nine nominations. I gotta say that out loud. <laughs> Nine nominations. We hope you win them all. You are incredible. I love you with all of my Asian heart. Have the best evening, Thank and we'll you. see you later. Thank you. <laughs> so we're now. We are joined by Elliot and Olivia, who are nominated for an outstanding achievement in Affiliate Theatre Awards. Wow. And you are the writing, directing, couple, double <laughs> act behind Flesh and Bone. We are indeed, yes. yes. How do you feel being here? 
It's absolutely surreal. It's we mad, can't yeah. believe it. It's mad. It's mad. Our show we, we, it came from kind of writing it in our bedroom, in our tiny little bedroom on the estate in Dalston, and to be here is just so surreal. Yeah, it's mad. So this is your debut. Yes. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. First time ever doing a theatre. First time ever doing a show. Yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> I was going to say, for folks at home, give us a little overview of this particular piece. Yeah, so Flesh and Bone um, is about five characters that uh, live in a tower block in East London and the tower block is due for demolition. Um, so it kind of follows the life of these people um, and yeah. how they suffer through that, basically. But it's very funny. It's, it's, all written, it's, it's all written in a Shakespeare slash Cockney kind of rhyming slang uh, tone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you guys closed in July and now you're at the Olivier's. I yeah. mean, that's almost... A year ago. I, I mean, are you just like pinching yourself? Totally. Like it looking mad, up. It was a mad surprise. It was about a week before the nominations were announced online. Uh, I got a call saying, oh, we're just correlating some images. You might, you're being considered for an, uh, an Olivia. And I went, what? You're just, what? And they said, no, 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 you're not nominated. You're not nominated. We just correlated images. And I was like, oh, OK, all right, cool. And then we sat there shaking for about a week, got a cup of tea, sat down, watched the nominations. And it, we were there. It, it happened. Yeah. Well, congratulations, congratulations to both of you. Thanks Have so much fun tonight. We'll see you inside. You look amazing. Good luck. Yeah, you Thank look beautiful. You. you look so handsome. Thank Have fun. You. Thank you. Oh, sorry. Yes. Glamour, 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 glamour. I love this woman so much, <laughs> Beverly. Thank Hello. you for speaking to us tonight. Oh my goodness. Pleasure. Busy How night. Yeah. Busy night. It is a busy night. I am. Um, I'm doing the double. A double. Yes. Nice. No, lucky you. <laughs> I am singing right at the top of the show, and yep. then I'm singing again in the remembrance oh my section goodness. as well. That so. means you basically cannot have a drink until that second one's done. Nope. Yeah. <laughs> there is no relaxing <laughs> until I have sung my last note. <laughs> that you, I mean, you've done concerts, you've done, you know, theatre, you've done absolutely everything. Do you still get nervous a little bit before you get on stage? Um, I don't really suffer from nerves. I guess because I've been doing this forever, but. I get excited, yeah. like I'm like, okay, where's the mic? Where's the mic? Give me that yeah. mic, you know? And I just, you know, yeah. I love it. Yeah. yeah. I absolutely, you really do. I just love it. A few years ago, a friend of mine said to me, you were born to style, you were born to shop, and I think you were born to sing and perform. Yeah. You're one so. of the, we're very lucky, aren't we, that we oh, do the jobs that we yeah. should absolutely we are, do. We, you know, it's a blessing to be able to get up in the morning and say, I do this and I get paid to do this. Yeah. And sometimes you get like lots of money and sometimes you do it for nothing. Yeah. And the two are the same because of the way it makes you feel. Yeah. God, that's oh, so that's inspiring wonderful. to hear. And, and yeah. I mean, we've known each other for years. I've yes. even been in one of Beverly's videos. What? I've been in one of Beverly's videos. I've never been in, I'll do catering. Yeah. I'll do catering. <laughs> you be in the video, I'll do the catering. But, <laughs> we changed. but we've spoken over the years yes. and, you know, there are highs and lows. What is yeah. it that keeps you motivated? And what would you say to yourself, you know, if you could go back at 15? <sighs> you have to to love it because this is not an easy road right. to walk down yeah there must be the love because the love motivates everything else it motivates the practice at home it motivates making the right decisions you know it, it it's, it's everything it makes it, it means that you will step on a stage or go into a studio or whatever and absolutely give everything you can because yeah. the sheer joy of sheer joy the craft love. Yeah. that's yeah. it that's sound, it sound sound well i'm advice. not even gonna wish you good luck because you don't need it but you will be sensational <laughs> have a great tonight. evening have a great boys. Evening. We love you. Do. thank you well, Anita, we are in the presence of dance royalty. Sir Matthew Bourne, congratulations. Tonight, you are receiving the special Olivier Award for your contribution to the performing arts. I mean, how does that make you feel? It feels incredible. I, I feel, you know, maybe I've got a few more years in me yet doing this. You have a ton feels, of years in you. It does feel great. Yeah, wonderful. I, I, unbelievable. Well, you've won so many. Um, I think now you're going to be up there with uh, Dame Judi Dench as uh, the two people who have won the most Olivier's. I think is it eight? Is this going to be number eight? eight? It's even more incredible when you think of someone like Judi Dench, who's, you know, to everyone in our industry is a goddess, you know? And, uh, so I, I, I mean, I, I'm amazed by that. Yeah. And I understand we're going to get a tribute to your uh, glorious production of Swan Lake this evening as a special presentation as well. We are. I think at the, at the end of the, the show today, we're doing a, se a sequence from Swan Lake. My, my swans have got up at 5.30 this morning from Norwich, got on a bus to come here. <laughs> Bless them. Uh, good image. Anything for Sir Matthew Bourne. <laughs> yes, anything. Yeah, yeah, amazing.
Kathy, what is that? I mean, it just feels like we're living in a moment where dance is like so appreciated and it's on telly all the time and yes. people are hooked watching it. You bringing, you know, your performances to Saddlers Wells and across the country and across the world. Yeah. What is it that communicates to everybody with the, the, the art form that's dance? I think it's very interesting what's happened with dance because I think, as you say, there's so much dance on television now in the, in the, the shows like Strictly and things. I think people get to understand what dance uh, is all about more. They, they listen to what the, uh, the judges say. They get to know what is maybe a good dancer or not so good, you know, good choreography. You know, people start to form their own views about it. So people have, everyone's become a critic in a, in a strange way, but hopefully more like a fan. And I think it's, it's increased interest in dance in general across the board. So we're in really wonderful, extraordinary times now. Um, but not only on television, I think in this country we have an incredible amount of, of um, internationally uh, famous choreographers who, who can go to any place in the world and, and, um, and their work is lauded, you know, and I think that's incredible. I think, um, I'm sorry to say it, Frank, but I think London has become the dance capital yes. of the world. Well, with you here, Matthew, I think I'll back that up. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Well, Matthew, have an incredible evening. I know you've got royalty presenting the award to you tonight. I have. I've yes. not met the Duchess, actually, ever, so that would be nice to And it's to an Olivier's her. first as well. First it time, is. like, anybody... It's a Royal have... Olivier's yeah. tonight. It is. It's the Royal Olivier Awards. <laughs> <laughs> no, it'd be lovely to meet the, the, the Duchess. I've, I've heard she's delightful, so I'm, I'm looking forward to meeting her. And a her. huge fan of dance, so yes. congratulations again. Have a fantastic Thank evening. Thank you so much. Thank lovely you. to see you both. Congrats. Thank you. Good to see you. Lovely to see you. So we are now joined by three wonderful gents who are battling it out for best actor in a supporting role tonight. So we have Chris Wally, Adrian Lucas, and Malcolm Sinclair. Hello. There, now there is Good someone evening, else guys. up in the category, isn't there? Adam. He's not here, yeah. but we're not. We're not going to talk about him. He's late. Not coming. Don't worry no, about me. Who's one? Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sharpened yeah. already. Yeah. <laughs> He's dead to us. And boys, I have to say, you are giving the girls a run for their money because oh, you all look very dapper, very well. smart. I wish I got a scarf yeah, like this one, but you know. Okay. Rich mate, and I thought actually rather does it. Shows me off next to you. Next year I might put a little stall at the end of the carpet and just sell them as people come in. <laughs> I do love a man in a bow tie though. Oh, they look, honestly, you look so, so nice. Are you a little bit nervous? We've all tied our own, haven't we? Uh, well, I've done you. yours. I did yours just well, before we went Well, I did tie my own though, yeah. but you, you, yeah, I you fixed it up. I'm his no I mean, personal well, stylist. It was I just wanted to touch it. That was why. <laughs> <laughs> um, guys, t you, you must be a little bit nervous about tonight. You know, you're going up for an Olivier Award. Yeah. Well, I, yes, I am a little bit nervous. I've been trying to think about what to say, and the one thing, the advice I got was don't try and be funny. Yeah. Yes. Which, of course, don't is funny. Don't look at me when you say that. That's very rude. So, actually, <laughs> I was sort of I was looking around the, the several company. So, I think the thing is just to get the thanks out, try not yeah. to be nervous, and try and enjoy it. I don't know. Yeah, well, it had to be once before when I was nominated, and... Uh, uh, and I, somebody else called Toby Jones, whatever happened to him, <laughs> won it. And so I, I, I learned how to compose my face. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, have you practiced your oh. I wish I'd got it, but I love you face? Can we have oh. a little go with that now? Well, I was told the best thing to do is fall off your chair <laughs> <laughs> in astonishment and fury, but anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, listen, we, Flip we a table. Flip a table, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's yeah. what I'm going to do anyway. Well, yeah, listen, it's, it's not about the winning. It's oh, about it the it's taking part. part. Oh, do you know what? It's about the winning. <laughs> it's about the winning. Don't listen it's to me. It's definitely about the winning. <laughs> <laughs> best of luck, best of luck, best of luck. Have a great Thank evening. You. See you next time. It's Bye. all about the winning, especially if you're nominated, like Mark Antel in here, nominated for Little Shop of Horrors. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Thank How you. How do you feel? It's amazing. I mean, it, I, it was such a shock to be nominated. I wasn't expecting it at all. I thought, um, and yeah, it was just so mad. So, I mean, it's, it's been amazing. This last month has just been crazy and very exciting. How did you find out? Um, I was actually on a, a lunch break uh, from rehearsals for a play I'm doing and um, my phone just started lighting up and I wasn't sure what was going on and um, I had a text message saying oh my god I screamed when they called your name and I couldn't believe it and then my mum and dad rang me and they were shopping in Tesco's they were watching the live feed 
and um, yeah, so I found out via that, which was very exciting. What what is what what is it about this particular production? Because it was a six week run, wasn't it? That made it yeah. so special and stand out. I think because uh, the show hadn't been done uh, for about ten years, I don't think, and um, we sort of reinvented it slightly, reimagined it. We had a drag queen, Vicky Vox from America, coming over and playing the plant, and it was a dream role of mine. So I'd always wanted to play Seymour, and I just couldn't believe I was, I was very lucky to be part of it. And where did you get the energy from to perform that for six weeks? It was intense. It was very hard. Yeah, I sort of looked after myself and and I was sort of in the gym trying to get my energy up and, and, and not drinking alcohol for three months and What? I know. Are you an actor? <laughs> yeah, apparently so, yeah. Um, yes, yeah, so you just you just do it though. And I mean to go out there every night and just to entertain that audience and, and just tell that story was amazing. Well Mark, you look fantastic. Best Thank of luck to you. Much. Have a phenomenal Thank evening. Thank you so much. Cheers. Thank you. Hey there, guys. I'm here with Vanessa Redgrave, who's reading over my cards. Uh, Martin Sherman and Jonathan Hyde uh, from Gently Down the Stream. First off, you look lovely tonight, all of you. Vanessa? Yes, I look lovely, too. You look lovely, too. Uh, you're here. You look lovely, too. Thank I was waiting for that, Vanessa. Yes, we've all worked hard for this moment. <laughs> you were nominated tonight for your work in Stephen Daldry's brilliant play, or um, Matthew Lopez's... Well, actually, Matthew and, Lopez. and Stephen Daldry's brilliant play, The Inheritance. Yes. Um, talk about working, <laughs> collaborating in the room with these artists to create this brilliant piece of work. Well, I just felt so honored to be in the room and working with them. It was the gift of my life, mm. with respect to other directors and ensemble. It was extraordinary. And I understand Stephen um, had to, you know, get you to do the show in a very fun manner, if you will. He showed up at your apartment and uh, you got a phone call. Yes, I got a phone call from my, one of my grandsons. Um, saying, Look, there's somebody here at the apartment uh, waiting for you. And I said, OK. And I just said goodbye to Jolie, my daughter, and I was feeling like crying. So I said, well, tell him I'll be along. And then he said, well, it's Stephen Daldry. I said, I'll be there. <laughs> and the rest uh, is history. Well, then he said he wanted me to be in this play. And you did it. Aren't I lucky? You did it. I saw mm -hmm. it. You were amazing, and it's a brilliant piece. Thank you. Martin, I have to point out, uh, you're gently down the stream. Your leading man is nominated this evening for an award. Um, I saw this play at the Public Theater. Uh, how does it feel to have some representation here tonight at the Olivier Awards? Oh, really, really thrilled. It was the most exquisite production in London. And Jonathan and his fellow actors were absolutely magnificent. So I'm um, particularly thrilled that Jonathan has been nominated. Yeah. Jo Jonathan, what is this experience like for you coming to the Olivier's with the, again, with this brilliant piece of writing? Well, I'm very dazzled, but I couldn't improve on what Martin says. <laughs> it's thrilling, it's thrilling. It's thrilling that we get more oxygen for the production, more oxygen for the play, because I think it'd be lovely to give it a wider audience. I think so. I agree with that. I, I agree with that. that. Certainly. There you go. Yes, and we'll I have echo that. We, echo, we're all echo, in. Echo. We're all in. Have so much fun tonight, Thank and I'll see you guys you. inside. Thank you for joining Thank me. You, Thank you. Now, you've all heard of the seven deadly sins, but have you heard of the six fabulous ladies? <laughs> Look at this. The cast of six just here. All of you collectively are nominated for the best, for the, for the hold on, supporting role. Is that right? Yes. That's right. So what's going to happen if you win? Are you going to demand you get six of them? <laughs> <laughs> Every day of the week. <laughs> Sunday, I'm having it twice. <laughs> but what I love is that you've just done the matinee, you're going to watch the first half, yeah. and yeah. then you're going back to get on stage. Yeah, yeah. yeah. we're opening yeah. act two. Yeah. Just yeah. Yeah. It's full on, it's all go, go, go. Yeah. go, go, go. <laughs> we we don't mess with wicked, eh? We had half an hour to get ready. Well, you're all wicked because you're, you're Henry, the, Henry the Eighth's wise, aren't you? Yeah. Yeah. Who was your inspiration for each of the characters then? Because I've heard you've taken modern, contemporary references yeah. for your inspiration. Can we go along? Because it's yeah. fascinating. Yeah. So, um, Jane is kind of um, Adele, Demi Lovato vibes. Ooh, nice. yeah, yeah. I give you a bit of Alicia Keys, like Emily Sandy, a little bit nice. in there. Yeah. I'm like Grace Jones with a mix of Nicki Minaj. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, Catherine at Aragon is like Beyonce vibes, slash like Jennifer Hudson. Yeah. Yeah. I've got a bit of Kate Nash, Lily Allen, with a bit of Avril Lavigne as well. Uh, Catherine Howard is like Ariana Grande, it's sort of Britney vibes. Great. Well, I'm Kung Fu Panda. I take all of my inspiration from Kung Fu Panda. Come on! Come on. Just let me then, come well, well, Listen, you don't need inspiration, baby, because you are on fire. Yeah. Snap, snap, snap. 
<laughs> girls, listen, you need to get in there because you've got to go and work. Good luck. We love you all. Love, love you all. Good luck. 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 You gonna do intro? Okay. Okay. I'm with Arinze from Misty. Yes. The man, the writer, the actor, the sensation. And tell me how it feels to be at the Olivier's. It feels absolutely amazing. It's an honour to, to be nominated for one. And, um, and just to be here. So many of my friends are here. Um, so I'm kind of looking forward to the after party as well. There's Sophia Canada. We are all, oh, looking amazing. Look. <laughs> Sophia Canada. Everyone looks fantastic tonight. Everyone looks incredible. For people who, have never, who don't know anything about Misty, just tell us a little bit about it. Misty is a weird play about a writer who's writing a very weird play. Um, it's, it's a play about me. Um, uh, I'm this writer in East London and I'm writing a play um, that is about gentrification. Um, and so that's what it's about, as in, um, but then I use so many different art forms. You know, I'm, I'm clowning in it. Um, some moments feel like performance art and there's a load of comedy in it and it's also uh, got a, a lot of music in it too. And so um, I've really kind of broken form many times and, I, and, I, and there's a lot of direct address in it as well. Amazing. The yes. new breaking form has brought in a whole new audience, I think, oh. so theatre. Has that been, people been saying that to you? Well, I mean, it you was really unexpected. It. Yeah. yeah, it was kind of, um, I mean, even just it transferring into the West End, you know, I found that we made this show for the bush, you know, for this kind of 142-seater theatre with four pillars that block basically everyone's view. We made it for this intimate space. And, and when you make work for such an intimate space, you get to do whatever you want, you know? You don't have to think about, oh, we have to pull in 400 people every night. You know, you get to do what you want. And so to get to move into the West End with this piece that is incredibly unique, man, that was, for me, the biggest victory. Speaking of theater, tonight is all about, you know, being inspired and, you know, people coming to celebrate theater. Yeah. What inspired you when you first were introduced to theater? Um, so I got into theatre having had not, having not, I hadn't seen that many plays when I got into theatre. Because of when I was a young man, I think the first time I'd gone to the theatre ever was with school and I might have been 13 and I went and saw something like a proper traditional King Lear. Now that did not make me want to make any theatre or be on the stage at all actually. But it was um, a few years later where I got to kind of, I got to play. Um, that, that was the side of it that I fell in love with, getting to play on stage with people. And, and then I went and I saw something at the National. I saw Emperor Jones that Patterson Joseph uh, led, and that blew my mind. And then right after that, I saw uh, Death and the King's Horseman. Um, that was um, uh, the Wallace Inca play. And these two plays just kind of just blew my mind, and I was like, I need to do and isn't it amazing noise. how you can name and pinpoint exactly what it was? And I tell you something, Arinza, you are flipping the script. So there oh, will be yeah. armies of children, young people who will be inspired by you. Three songs yeah. to win. Yeah. Yes. I mean, wow. Yeah, yeah it's wow. true. It's true. <laughs> Thank you. And how does it feel to be here tonight? Um, man, it's, a, it's an honor. It's an honor to be nominated for one. Um, and, and then to actually. <laughs> nominated twice, which is mad. I can't even believe I'm saying it now. Um, but as well, it's like so many people who I love, right, and whose work has impacted me over the years, since I was just a young person just thinking about doing this. They're here, like they're walking past us right now. And, um, and so it's just a bit of a, for me, I'm having a bit of a moment where I'm like, oh, wow, I'm in the right place, you know? It's just that thing that I thought 12 years ago I wanted to do. Yeah. As a child or 12 years ago, would you have ever thought that this, this was an, this a possibility? This is the stuff that I dreamt of, you know what I mean? But it's a dream, so you never know if it's actually going to happen. And most dreams don't, don't really happen, do they? Well, this one is. You know? Keep dreaming because they're coming is. true, my friend. Congratulations. Congratulations. Have an amazing night. Thank you so much. Enjoy it. Why not? And you Lovely. too. Now, our next two stars you may have seen on television. Stars. We've got Shooty, <laughs> Shooty Gatwa, Sex Education. Yeah. And we've also got Wumi Musaku, who you might have seen in Luther. Thank you for talking to us today. It's lovely to see you. Thank you for having us. Now, you're here to present an award tonight, aren't you? Yes. Which one is that? So, lighting, lighting and set, set design as well. Lighting oh, my world, that's my yeah. world. Important, yeah. Yeah. very, very important. Very important. Very important. Lighting, as lighting know. is very important. Uh -huh. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it is, because it's not about having bad lighting. No, no, no ever. No, no. <laughs>
no, unlike no. this massive light that's coming towards my shiny <laughs> forehead <laughs> that looks a little bit like a helipad, <laughs> as we can you're see. Good, you're good, you're good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're rocking it. You're rocking Thank you very it. much. Talk to us about the Olivia. Talk to us about why are these so important? Because me and Angelica, we love it here. Yeah, there we go. It's so why good. are they important for the industry? I think theatre is important for the industry. I think theatre is and art is important for society, isn't it? Really? Yeah, yeah. 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 And the Olivier is recognised as the best of that, and so it's just great that we have this evening to celebrate theatre yeah. and yeah, art. Have you done sure. much theatre yourselves? A little bit. Yeah, yeah I have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just yeah, like five years of the. It's been mostly theatre for me. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. And yeah. how did you never know? Why do you say that? Because it just seems so at ease on camera. Oh my god, yeah. it's taken a lot of selfies to get to that point. <laughs> it's taken a lot of selfies to get to that point. Do you have to really readjust your brain? It's like it's almost like going to eat Chinese food or going to eat a curry. You know, you're doing the same thing, but it's very, very different at the same time. So different. Yeah. So different. Because like theatre is every night for like three months. Yeah. And uh, TV and film is like the same scene over and over again yeah. in one day. Yeah. They so both kind of fry your brain in different ways sometimes. Yeah. And yeah. You know, but theatre is like where you discover yeah. all the stuff that the character, you discover yeah. so much more with, with yeah. theatre because you have time. Yeah, I feel so, yeah. And you hear with so many actors, <laughs> so many actors. So I'm just thinking, I'm, I've got so many questions, that's a problem. <laughs> you, you hear with so many actors that go into very successful series and films, you know, Hollywood and stuff, that then they will go back to theatre, get paid next to nothing because they say it's so important to put their craft back on the stage. And, the buzz, and the yeah. buzz is different Absolutely, well. yeah. And it feeds, it feeds you in a different way. Yeah. Doing theatre, it feeds your, it nourishes your artist, artistry mm -hmm. in a different way mm -hmm. than TV and film. Yeah. You've got the live reaction right there to kind of like buzz off and play off, and so yeah. it's great. And yeah, like you say, it's like it's where you learn your craft, mm -hmm. isn't it? And it's where you hone your craft, and yeah, yeah, it's very important. Yeah. And Chuti, are you rooting for Jillian? I'm rooting for Jillian, man. Jillian, Auntie Jill, I'm rooting for you. <laughs> Come on, we gotta do this for the family. <laughs> All right, we gotta do it. Thank you so much, man. Thank, 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 thank you, thank you, thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here with the two writers of Dear Evan Hansen. Folks at home, if you're from the UK and have not seen it yet, it's a hit Broadway show, won a ton of Tonys, and it's coming to London very soon. Justin Paul and Binge Pasek, that was my commercial for your show. <laughs> Congratulations, guys. How does it feel to be here tonight at the Olivia Awards? It's pretty magical. It's very magical. We've never been before. I've never, you've never been, never We've been never been before. before. We've never been before, and it's, it's so exciting. And um, you know, uh, uh, glamorous and all of those things, and we're just thrilled to be here and not nervous at all because we have zero chance of winning anything, so it's marvelous. <laughs> so Dear Evan Hansen's coming to London next season. What can you tell us about the London run? Well, uh, tickets go on sale. I think they're on sale. On sale. They're about to go on sale. In a couple days. Cast and you're going into the Noel, Ca Noel Coward Theatre? Yeah, the Noel Coward Theatre, and we're here this week to actually cast the show. So uh, we're going to be Auditions here. Auditions are happening right now. Hopefully find our new British Evan Hansen. All right, so young Evans watching at home, you could be Evan Hansen. Now, you guys, you wrote the music for The Greatest Showman, which is like killing it still on the charts. Um, are we ever going to see The Greatest Showman on stage? I mean, I think that would be a great show. We're very hopeful about that. Um, sort of those discussions are ongoing, but we're hopeful about it. We'd love to bring the show here at some point. There's such a, a warm audience here a, a, in the UK, and we'd love to share a stage version of that with them someday, somehow. No idea how that's happening. Yeah. But yeah. Bring the British audiences under the big top with us. That's right. For I sure. love that. Bring it home. Um, let's talk about the collaboration between the two of you, because you guys met in college, and like, the rest is history. <laughs> <laughs> we met at the University of Michigan, and uh, I guess 14 years later, here we are talking to you at the Olivier. So yeah, a lot of, a, a lot of things happen. It's a lot of failing at one thing and succeeding at another. So like we failed at being dancers, we failed at being actors, we failed at being singers. So we kind of went to writing, and then thankfully that path led us to where we are. So it's just like one failure leads to a different success, I guess. Thanks for those <laughs> failures because we get the glorious music that you guys create. Speaking of Evan Hansen or going back to Evan Hansen, I feel like it would make for a perfect film. Would you guys ever want to turn that into a film property? Yeah, it's, uh, it's in development right now yeah. and we're trying to figure out how to uh, differentiate it from the stage version and how to make it something that's a cinematic, uh, that would work in a cinematic way. Yeah. Um, so we're in the middle of digging through talking it at the moment. About that. Yeah. yeah, it's in development. You know, th These things take time, obviously, but um, we're definitely talking about it. I'm excited about it. 
I know you guys got, uh, just got to town, but have you seen um, or do you have tickets for anything this week while you're in town? We have tickets for at least one thing, um, but you know we don't want to play any favorites on the red carpet at the Olivier's, but we're excited about the one show that we're definitely seeing, and then hopefully, I'm getting so excited for all the shows, so I, I hope that we get tickets for as many things as we can. Were you guys able to catch company at some point prior to this visit? We were no, I'm so sad. That might be yeah, yeah, on yeah. our list for this week. But it closed. Oh, no, never mind. <laughs> so take it off the list. <laughs> Terrible. Um, Evan Hansen, Greta Showman, Dogfight. I mean, what's next? What, can we talk about new projects that you guys are working on? We're, uh, we're excited. We're, we've been writing a, a, an adaptation of Snow White as a live action film for Disney. And we contributed and collaborated with our childhood hero, Alan Menken, on some new work for the Aladdin movie that's coming out as well. So that's Yeah, and that was exciting. actually shot over here, um, a, a good deal of it. So we were here in the production offices and, 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 and saw the set. And, uh, and it's, it's a big, wild, fun movie. Um, we just got the chance to screen it. And we're excited for audiences to check it out. Speaking of heroes, tonight is all about celebrating theater and celebrating our theater heroes at that. Um, who inspires you when it comes to the theater? Who do you look up to? Oh, gosh. Putting on the spot here, just A whole lot of people. I mean, you already hinted at it. Stephen Sondheim is obviously a huge hero of ours. Yeah. Uh, and so many of the great musical theater writers have, you know, have taught us so much in their work. And then also, you know, personally, we've gotten to know... Folks like Stephen, Stephen Schwartz, Schwartz and Lynn Aarons and Stephen Flaherty and uh, Janine Jeff, Tesori, who Jeff is going to be Bobby here tonight. Lopez. Yeah, there's so many writers who I think are very um, intent on passing down the tradition. And there's not a sense of competition at all with other writers that we have found. It's just really everyone loves this art form and this, and this, and this uh, medium and wants to continue it. So we've gotten the great chance to study with our heroes. Do you remember that one moment when you guys were sitting in theater as young boys thinking, oh my God, I'm so into this, this is what I need to do? I remember a moment uh, watching The Lion King and feeling, as a, as a young kid, and I think it was my first Broadway show, and being so overwhelmed with what was happening around me and, and what a theatricality could do to character, and uh, it made me think about how much I wanted to endeavor in trying to work in this field. Justin, don't mean to cut you off, no, but no, uh, we, we, we have some other I folks think it's walking. Time to cut us off. I'll, I'll get the answer to that question right <laughs> after this. <laughs> Bye, you guys. Bye. Thank you. Hi, Julian. Hello, Julian nice Anderson and Monica Dolan. Hi, Monica, how are you? Congratulations to both of you. Thank you very much. What an incredible you. show to be part of. It is, yes. I think we're having a lot of fun. We're yeah, we're fun. really having fun with it. I, I absolutely love doing it, and it's a great group of people. I mean, had you seen the film All About Eve before you, and what, when, you, when the script for a show like this comes your way, is it an instant yes? It was certainly an instant yes for me, I think. Also, I was very curious what it would be like to work with Evo, and um, it's ultimately the um, the play is the film. I mean, it's, it's the same, pretty much the same script yeah, as the, the film. Same, kind of the same script. I saw the play the other night. I absolutely thought that both of you were brilliant in the piece, and Evo's concept was just so incredible. And for our folks at home, you guys are playing to both the audience in the theater, but then also to a camera. What's that like for you going back and forth Playing to a theater, playing to a theater audience, but then playing to a camera. How do you do? Well, that? you actually have that more than I do, I think. Yeah, I've yeah. got direct address as well, so it's kind of three things. Yeah. It's um, it's funny until people sort of mentioned it, I didn't really notice that I was necessarily doing anything different. But I, I think you just think, well, my audience is here, all my audience is here, so you know, you're just sort of playing to wherever your audience mm -hmm. are, I guess. And Jillian, your interpretation of Margot Channing is stunning. Um, you know, Betty Davis who? Uh, did you? I'm joking, I'm joking, I'm joking. But uh, I should say you do a different interpretation and it's brilliant. What, when you were studying this part, did you have to kind of erase the film from your head? I mean, I, I saw the film again, I mean, I see the film many years ago and I saw it again before I met Evo, before I realized that he wasn't interested in remaking the film. And it was then important for me to just forget it entirely and to start from scratch with what I found out about her in, in the text. And, um, and so um, I think that, you know, going into something with Evo, you kind of have to show up empty of mind, not knowing where, what direction he's going to go um, at all as well. And so it kind of, I mean, I, I actually don't even really feel like I figured out who she was until we'd been up for about three weeks or a month, to be honest. You know, it took a, it took a while just to really get grounded in her. 
Well, congratulations on a beautiful performance. Yeah, what does it mean to be at the Olivier's tonight, both to be nominated? So it's really wonderful, and I'm so I'm just so glad yes. we both are. Sisterhood. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's really yeah. great. Yeah. Yeah. Well, have an amazing evening, ladies. Congratulations yes. to you both. You both look beautiful you so as well. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Have an amazing night. Thank, Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We're going to allow Monica and Gillian to leave the stage. And one of the shows that's got nine nominations is Company. If you don't know anything about it, here's a little peek. So in advance of the Olivier Awards on April the 7th, uh, welcome to this special Road to the Olivier's broadcast. And it's my absolute pleasure to invite the cast of Stephen Sondheim's company to join us in the studio today. Rosalie, Patty, Jonathan and Richard, welcome. Thank you. Thank you. So, this extraordinary kind of reimagining of company. Rosalie, tell us a little bit about this and how you came to be involved. Gosh, well, I feel um, very close to this project because mm. I was involved from the very conception of it when um, Chris Harper, our producer, and Marianne Elliott, the director, um, even thought of the idea. They came to me when I was way back when, when I was yeah, wow. full of child, and said, um, <laughs> would you want to give birth to this as well? And I said, yeah, I'd like to. Two at once. Yeah, yeah. exactly. So we waited a bit, obviously. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I've just been building it from the ground up with them for mm. a couple of years before we got to this stage. So it's absolutely incredible to be sitting here today with all these <laughs> nominations <laughs> and these amazing people I know. It was so close to finishing. Yeah. But it's been an amazing, yeah. amazing thing to, yes. to, to build this. Yeah. This, this Reimagined. Exactly. Production. Bobby. Yeah, and production, of course. Yeah. And um, to be so heavily involved in the creation of something yeah. is, is a really magical thing. Yeah. To, and, and Patty, life. back at the Olivier's, you obviously won in 1985, I think, isn't it? For Fontaine in the original Les Mis and, uh, and nominated and it was much again. Different. The Olivier's were much different then, weren't they? Very they different. They were very small and it was popular vote, I think. Mm. It was, And there were like seven people that yeah, voted. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Because I, somebody, a punter came up to me and said, I voted for you. And I went, oh, I didn't know who he was and he was just an audience member. Right. And we still do have yeah. that public panel now. So they oh, really? do the first stage. Yeah, nine of them go and see... Around 105 productions each oh, wow. year. Wow. Yeah, and they start the whole process off. Wow. Yeah. So uh, coming to the guys at the end, so Jonathan Richard, I guess people will know you the most at home from your various television roles and Broadchurch and W1A and yeah. Corrie and other things. So tell us about being in the theatre and doing a musical on stage like this. Well, you've had quite a lot of experience with musicals as well. Yeah, 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 yeah. Over the, you know, but um, certainly this something very different about this mm. particular show, which um, I think. We, it was apparent even before I was involved, like just with the people involved uh, who were announced ahead of time and obviously Marianne Elliott, who I was desperate to get the chance to work with, and obviously Stephen Sondheim um, being involved and on the ground, that's kind of definitely a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. Maybe not for all people, but for most people, oh, it's, it's a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity, you know. So, um, yeah, it was just something I was, I was desperate to be involved in and very, very, very grateful to have yeah. made it happen, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and I, <laughs> I think that the thing about theatre, particularly, is that you have a you know you have a conversation with 850 people every night, and I think what um, Marianne set out to do, I was lucky enough to be in the workshop, yes. um, and from the get-go, it was to make a vital and immediate piece of theatre which reflects society, which is what the original production of Company did so well, I think, in the late 60s and early 70s. So for it to be that immediate and to be a part of something with the gender swapping, especially for me playing a gay character, mm. um, and not really. A sort of underestimating the political impact that would have in terms of, you know, talking to people afterwards and people, you know, representation. I think it's been extraordinary across yeah. the board. So, I'm, yeah, equally, I think we're all thrilled. To and be I guess everyone wants to know how long did it take you to learn the Patter song? At that I'm speed. Still learning it. <laughs> <laughs> Your lyrics just kept changing, didn't they? The like little ones kept changing. Yeah, like, well, you oh. had one as well, didn't you, for Ladies yes, Lunch? Yes, you did. And there was oh, right, right, and it was like getting the courage to change it in the middle of a in the middle yeah. of performing. Cause yeah. It's like you want to do like a deportment school sure. version where you, if you can do it with a when you're, when you're putting <laughs> yeah. a new word in with a book on your head whilst rubbing your tummy, <laughs> then. Yeah. Uh, she was sort of are on stage, jumping in and out of the set and everything at yeah, the same time. Yeah, so, yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, it was, yeah, I was very well yeah. looked after. And so how has it been 
being back in London actually doing a show on the West End. Oh, I love it. I, 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 I I'm going to cry. It's almost over. It's been the best experience that I have ever had on the stage, thanks wow. to these people that Great I work company. every yeah. night with, and Marianne, and the, the backstage crew, everything, and the audiences, and London. And it's it, the, I think the difference between New York and London is it's, it's much more relaxed. First of all, it's a much more of a time-honored profession here, acting and theater. And there isn't the, the, the cutthroat competition that there is in New York. Um, and it isn't so the red carpet has been cleared as the royal party has arrived at the Royal Albert Hall. Her Royal Highness, the Duchess of Cornwall, is arriving. And to greet her is uh, Kenneth Alyssa. He's the Queen's Lord Lieutenant of Greater London. The Lord Lieutenant is the Queen's personal representative of each county in the UK. And he's the first person to say hello and goodbye to members of the Royal Household. Alongside the Duchess is Julian Bird, Chief Executive of Society of London Theatre and UK Theatre and Executive Producer of the Olivier Awards. On the other side of Her Royal Highness is Nick Scott. Nick is the CEO of Big Group, the agency who work alongside Mastercard and the Olivier's, the partnership. The Duchess is looking absolutely radiant in a blue gown tonight. Sensational diamonds. She's a huge fan of the arts, particularly dance and theatre, and is attending the ceremony with her son, Tom Parker Bowles who's following behind. And this evening, the Duchess will be presenting an award to Sir Matthew Bourne, the Lifetime Achievement Award for his outstanding contribution to dance. And she'll be presenting that alongside Darcy Bussell, one of the greatest British ballerinas of our time. And of course, the brilliant actor, Richard E. Grant, Darcy and Richard will be joining Her Royal Highness in the Royal Box this evening. Now, as the Royal Party make their way into the Royal Albert Hall, Julian Bird will introduce Her Highness to some special guests. It's Craig Hassel, the CEO of the Royal Albert Hall, Kenny Wax, President of the Society of Theatre, Anne Cairns, who's Vice Chairman of MasterCard and the headline sponsors of the Olivier Awards, Sir Peter Bazalgette there, that's the Chair of ITV, Jason Manford, of course, the host for our evening. And she's received a posy from one of the young actresses who will be performing on stage tonight. Now the Royal Party will make their way in. They will take their seats for the evening ceremony. And there we have our very first royal attendee to the Olivier Awards, the 43rd Olivier yeah. Awards, one to remember. What a night. <laughs> what a night already, and it hasn't even started yet. I know. Wasn't that incredible? Incredible. The buzz on, on the red carpet, I, for me, was, was buzzier than other years. What are you looking forward to the most tonight? Oh, just all, all, all the performances. Yeah, all I know. Of it. I'd say the know. opening, probably. I the opening. Yes. I think that's for me, be for me, it's got to be Tina Turner. Oh, Bring it on, <laughs> Tina! Closing yes. the first act, I can't wait to see Adrian Warren do what she does best. Yes, yeah. absolutely. And you got to talk to Petra Lapone. Oh my goodness, you, uh, talk to her. I just gushed all over her. <laughs> I mean, I love that woman so much. I think she might know that now, and she might have a restraining order out on me. No, I know. No, I know you guys. <laughs> I think there this. might be a few. <laughs> no, I know you guys have done this before. So for me, this is new, but it's really sort of. Did you love it? I loved it, and it's made me. Want to go to theatre more and more, which I love doing exactly anyway. Exactly what tonight's Absolutely. about. Exactly what tonight's Celebrity about. Theater, right? Yeah. Well, join us after, uh, at, at the interval. Anita and I will be back for the interval show in about an hour or so. And um, it's been a great night. Hasn't it? Yeah. We will see the highlight show on ITV at 10.15 tonight. Enjoy the evening. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.